To get yourself started with the NAS, you need a few different things. So you need yourself a hard drive and the NAS unit itself. So the one that I'm demoing today is a Synology 923 Plus, and I'm gonna be installing four different drives in there. Hey everyone, my name is Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. This is a quick beginner's guide on how to get yourself set up and how to get your NAS configured in your home environment. And also as an additional bonus, I'm going to be setting these up as a highly available pair as I do have a second one of these. So let's jump straight in. Inside the box you get a power lead and inside here you get the other parts the adapter, and also two ethernet cables. You also get yourself a key inside to keep those discs safe, and you get yourself some hard drive screws and a quick installation guide in case you're unsure. Now, underneath this is the actual NAS itself, so let's pull this out. And this is how small the drive is. So this fits four discs inside. It has some cooling at the back that you can see just here. It has two one gigabit ethernet ports, an eSATA and a USB port just here. If you want to install some SSDs inside here, you have two NVMe slots just here underneath and you can go ahead and install them in here. And finally on the front, you have the four bays that I mentioned to you, a USB 3.0 port and also a power button. Along the side here, you have a status light and the four disc lights as well. So you know what's going on with your discs at all times. Now, easily enough to install your drives. I have four of them just here. I have some Western Digital 10 terabyte drives and we can go ahead and pop them just in here. So to install it, lift the flap and pull this out. These are screwless drives. So the one thing you need to do is pull these little tabs on the side. So these both come out and there's two of them. And then you can go ahead and pop your disc in. Now, if you've installed this correctly, which is like so, you will see you have the ports on the front, which are gonna go into the connectivity in the NAS drive. And then you have four holes that match up, ready for these to go back in. And you just press them on like so. And we can just repeat the same with the other four drives. So once you've placed the four drives in, I do have two 10 terabytes and two 12 terabyte drives in this configuration. So if you wanted to know that, we go ahead and take each drive and pop them in until they click in. So you just go one by one, push it in, you'll feel it push in, and just click it into place. And we'll just go ahead and pop this last one in too. There we go, that's all done. Now we just need to put all the connections into the back. So for this first part, there is just two connections we need on the back. We need the 12 volt DC power supply, and we need an ethernet cable. So we'll go ahead and pop the ethernet cable into LAN one, and we'll go ahead and pop the DC power in into the port just there. So we'll go ahead and stand this up and then I'm gonna go ahead and power on the unit. And just so you can see that just there, you can see the blue light that's flashing on the front, but it is going ahead and powering up just now. The next thing we're gonna do is head over to the computer where we do all the configuration of this unit itself. Once you've got that all plugged in, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and jump onto your computer and it's really easy and simple to find your NAS nowadays. You don't need to type in an IP address or find out what it is. You just simply type in at the top Synology NAS colon 5000, hit enter in your browser and it will find it automatically for you. So we're gonna let this go off now and set up the Synology and click install and we want it to automatically download the latest version from the web, so we click automatically download, and it's gonna delete all the data of all four disks, but it's a brand new NAS, so we're not really concerned about this. So we click understand and click continue, and this probably takes about 10 to 15 minutes, so let's leave this going and we'll come back once it's done. There we go, that's now complete, and we have DSM 7.2 installed, which is the latest version, so let's go ahead and click start. The first thing you wanna do is give it a device name, so I'm just gonna call this NAS1, we give it an administrator account. You can't use the names like admin or administrator. So we're going to go ahead and use something else. And then you give it a username and password of your choosing. We click next. So the first two things I do when I set up my Synology NAS is I give it a static IP address. So we go to network and at the moment it's got a server name and we can manually configure the DNS and LAN. So you can see we have the LAN settings, the default gateway just here, we can click edit, but we wanna to go to the network interface and click edit on there. Then we wanna use a manual configuration. So I'm gonna go 192.168.123.51. The subnet mask is actually 255.255.255.0. And then we have the default gateway. And if there's any additional settings you wanna set up, you can do there. 
Once it goes ahead and applies those network settings, you're going to have to go ahead and re-log in again with the new IP address. So at the top of the browser, 192.168.123.51 colon 5000, and it will take you back to the login page. That is now set up. So the IP address, the static configuration is just there. And having a quick look along the left-hand side, you pretty much have all most of the options that you're ever going to need on the Synology NAS. So you have your folder and file access, external access, security, uh, login portal, notifications, hardware and power, etc, etc. So I'm not going to go through all of these because this is a quick begins guide. But um, the next thing we want to take a look at is the security. So it's all good setting up the network protection, but the next is going to be the security. So now that we have the network installed, we're going to go ahead and look at the users and groups. So that's the first that's the next thing I would go to. So making sure the relevant people have the access that they require. So if we jump straight in, we have admin and guest, which are automatically disabled, which is what you want. We don't want to keep them active because again, they're very prone to be attacked if they are easily compromised. So we want to keep that out of the way. So any new users that you want to create, you go ahead and create them here. Uh, you can send them an email so they can actually log in remotely if you have that configuration set up. The next part is the most important thing. So we will come back to users and groups shortly just because we want to allocate some permissions in a little while. But the next thing is the storage manager itself. So we have all the drives installed and we need to get them configured. So we go ahead to the storage creation of pools and volumes. So we click start. So a list down here is a full options of all the different raids you can choose. Now I'm going to actually be choosing raid five. I'm not going to go into the different levels of raid. It depends on your configuration setups, probably a little bit more for this video than you required, but I have four drives installed and I only ever want the option. If I lose one drive, I can replace it. So this needs a minimum number of three drives and the fault tolerance is one. So I can lose one disc at any point. Now, if I go ahead and click next, it's going to select all the drives that we want. Now I have four different sizes in there or two different sizes of two different disks, but it will always choose the minimum size. So you can see the estimated capacity is 27.3 terabytes, which is 9.1, 9.1, and one of them it's taken down to 9.1 as well. So that's 27.3. So keep that one in mind when you are choosing uh, disks for your NAS drive as well. We're going to click next and it comes up saying some of the drives are not on the Synology compatibility list, but that's fine. We can go ahead and click continue. And then it's going to ask you how much data do you want to allocate to this volume? Uh, we're going to go with the full amount. So let's go ahead and click max and it's the full volume. So we go ahead and click next. And then we have to select the file system. So we're going to keep this as the default as BTRFS because that is the most wide range of compatibility for everything that you could possibly be using it for. Um, I am actually going to be setting this up as a highly available pair. So we do want the replication also as well. Uh, you can choose to encrypt the volume if you want. So I'm going to leave that unticked, but I would suggest you encrypt the volume when you are setting this up and we go ahead and click apply. So again, it's going to erase all the disks again. They're empty anyway, so we can go ahead and do that. And we'll come back once the volume has been created. And just as I'm talking, it's gone ahead and created it. So you can see down here, the storage pool is processing and the volume is creating. So we'll come back once it's done. Let's go ahead and make your file shares now. So there's file station that you can click on on the screen and we click OK. And there's nothing set up at the moment. So it's going to say, hey, let's let's set something up. So let's call this um, backup volume um, just for the sake of this video. Once you've done that, you can click next. So just looking at the settings down here, you can hide it from my network places or hide subfolders from users that don't have permissions. So good one to have if you do have uh, areas of folders that you don't want everyone to have access to, uh, you can always go ahead and hide them automatically so they're not visible. I would highly recommend you enable the recycle bin and restrict that to administrators only as well. So click next. If you want some additional security in there, uh, protecting the encryption or protecting the shared folder, you can go ahead and select those. If not, you can just click next. In the advanced settings, we don't need to worry too much about this one. We can go ahead and click next and that will go off and create the volume for you or equate the SMB share. And right here, we're going ahead and we're choosing whether we want to give people options or not. So we can say no access to inside wire, no access to admin. So admin has full read and write at the moment and so does inside wire. And if you had additional users in there, you could do that as well. Or if you've created groups, we can say, OK, any users can have read and write access to this as well. But that's not what we want at the moment. We just want those two users to have those. So we click apply and there we go. That's now created and set up for you. And it's literally as easy as that to set up a file share. And that is the file share complete. And you can see that there we can click on file station and we can see the backup folder here. And if we want to create any new folders, 
and you can go ahead and click create and it will create a folder within there or if you want to make an additional sub share you can go ahead and click create shared folder and it will go through the process of the wizard again so really easy and simple to set up that's how that's done final thing i want to show you in terms of files is the file services now within here there's so many different options you can set up smb afp nfs ftp so there's loads of different things you can set up here so you can go ahead and enable the SMB service. All the others are disabled automatically. So if you want to create them, you can do. Uh, one thing I would tell you is just to make sure SMB2 is your minimum. Best to use SMB3 if you can. Um, but on here, you can set SMB2 as your minimum. And that would be the minimum protocol that you'd be using to connect to this. It's just a little bit more secure and you're not able to read the data that gets sent across between it. Further down here, it shows you how to access the NAS. So if, if you're using a PC and you have Windows Explorer open, you can type in backslash backslash NAS backup one or backup NAS one, whatever the name is, and it will pop up with the folder. However, if you do have network discovery turned off, you will need to use the IP address. So keep that one in mind when you are doing that. And then once you've made all your changes, you can go ahead and press apply now as i showed you back earlier with the group so if i go ahead and make a new group so file user we can type in a password uh, we can send a notification to the user if they do have a login or if they have an email address associated to it and you click next and then within there you can put them into different groups so the users will be standard access to all the files that are within there so we can go ahead and click next and do you want to give them access to the shared folder so you can say no access read only or read and write depending on what you want to give them so you can create the granularity within each user that you're setting up so if you want separate files for each of your family members or different areas of your business you can do that this way the one feature that probably stands Synology away from the other competitors now they do have something similar but it's not quite as comprehensive I believe is all the packages that you have enabled within here so it's not just used for use for files and folders and photos there is a lot more that you can do in this and you can see by all these packages within here what you can do so DHCP server DNS server identity managers file stations is already installed if you want to have hybrid share the vault backups if you want that media services proxy services so there's so much that you can actually do within this rather than just a file share now as i mentioned earlier as a bonus i am going to set up a high availability pair and to do that what we need to do we just replicate the exact same setup that we have done on this one on a second nas so i have a secondary 923 plus which i'm going to set up and then we want to actually install one application which is called Synology High Availability. And that allows you to set them both up as a cluster or a pair. And um, so we go ahead and click install. If I click on the top left-hand corner just here, you can see we have the Synology High Availability. So we can configure a high availability pair. Now to set these up, you have your two Synology NASes set up side by side, both plugging into the network. So they both have their individual IP and you have a network cable running between them as well. So you make sure you have them connected in between and that will then send the heartbeat through knowing which one they need to use. So we've installed the high availability application now and you can see I have two NASs set up. I have NAS Backup 1 and NAS Backup 2 and they're both set up with 52 and 51 as their respective IPs. So once you go into the high availability, you quickly click next and it will say, do you have your network cable plugged into LAN 1? Yes. Do you have your heartbeat connection which goes to the other NAS in port 2? Yes, I do. So we click next. And then there you go. You can swap these around if you need to, but we don't need to at this point because that's how it's set up. And then that's going to go off and do any checks that it needs to do at this point. So we'll give that a minute and then we'll come back to this. So it's already got the credentials of the NAS2 because I've logged into it. So NAS Backup 2, we click Connection and it doesn't show up on here, but actually I just need to type in the username and password. Once you've popped in the username and password of this, you'll see it will start loading and doing its relevant checks. So it will check the IP, it will check the disk configuration. So you want these to match exactly the same in terms of disk configuration and how you've got them set up as well. And then you want to give it a cluster name. So you have 51 and 52, and then you give it a cluster IP, which basically sits on top and basically chooses one or the other as a high, av high availability configuration. So we'll go with 53 and NAS backup. And this is where it's going to now verify all the requirements. So system information is fine. The volumes are fine. Network setup is fine. The network service is fine and the interface. So we click next after that. And it's saying this is the IP address. This is the heartbeat interface. This is the primary and this is the passive server. So we click done. And then what it's going to go do now, it's going to strip off everything that we've done. So yes, everything we have done till now, we will lose. And you're going to come back with a single IP of 
and that will work as a high availability cluster in terms of NAS drives. And there you can see right there, we have the cluster set up with the high availability. You can see it's a healthy connection between the two and there's a transfer speed. You have some manager options here, so you can switch over, so you can move the primary server if you want while you're upgrading or update a certain package. You can remove the passive server or you can remove the cluster also as well. If we scroll down, you can see the performance of each of them. So 20% and 10%, how much memory is being used and any log information or any recent events as well. So this just gives you a quick idea. This was a bit of a bonus clip just to show you how to set up the high availability if this is something you are looking for. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see something specific on the NAS or if you found this tutorial useful. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.